Hi everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters. Well, I have some brand new kits from Tacom to share with you. Uh, two, first of all, two very big 16 scale, actually not very big because they're big scale, but actually very small vehicles. And they're both based on the Panzer I chassis. The first one we have right here is an early war tank. This is the uh, the Kleiner Befelswagen, which or like you'd say a command tank for early war. And then we also have this. This one is actually really cool. This is a Panzer 1B where they took the turret off and mounted a Stug uh, 75 millimeter gun on top of it. Now, there is one real picture of this. So we know we made at least one of these. And it's there's a famous World War II picture near the Brandenburg Gate at the very end of the war of one of these vehicles right here. So the same numbers, everything are inside this kit. But this is actually cool. Plus, both of these kits include a 3D sculpted figure by uh, by Jason. Now, it's a plastic kit you have to actually put together. But the, the sculpting is beautiful on both figures inside. Plus, we also have this. This monster right here, this is a brand new one too. All of these will be soon to be released. But this is a 350th scale floating dock. And it is big. It is heavy too. And lots of photo itch in there. But this is something really cool. This is what I love about TACOM. TACOM is always doing different stuff, unusual stuff. And this fits that bill right here. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to tear open all three of these kits, take a quick look inside, let you see all the pretty parts. So let's get started. So first up, we are taking a look at the uh, the Tacom 116 scale Panzer Jaeger 1B. This is with the 7.5 centimeter Stug Cannon 40 L48, and as you can see here, it also comes with a cool late war soldier up on top loading up a shell. And this is the one I was telling you about that they have the picture of. I believe it's in the Tear Garden, right near the Brandenburg Gate. I'm going to show you a picture of that right now. And so now, let's take a look inside the kit. Okay, we're going to jump right in. Uh, this time a little bit differently. We're going to take a look at the figure first on this because it is very impressive. I'm going to put my hand behind the figure's face so you can get a closer look at it. It focuses a lot better that way. But look at that nice detail on that. Plus also a slide molded helmet see right there plus look at the detail on the bottom of the shoes that is a separate piece there's the shoes we've got some ammo pouches and then we're just gonna let you look at the nice folds and detail inside the actual uniform on him yes very very impressive looking figure I think it'll build up absolutely beautifully Okay, now we're gonna start taking a look at the, the regular plastic parts for the actual vehicle. Now, you're gonna notice if you've built any of the uh, the Panzer ones, uh, these are gonna be pretty much the same sprues on it. The main difference here is there's gonna be some new stuff that is going to hold the, uh, the Stug's 75 millimeter cannon. That one is right off of the DOS work kit. They worked in cooperation to let them use that that uh, 75 on here. So this suspension stuff is gonna be just like the original Panzer I. You get two sets of this particular sprue here, but if you haven't seen it already, definitely it is, it is really, really nice to look at. And two of those are gonna be inside the kit. And here is, this is actually part of the original Dosworks Stug kit. And so see, these are some of the parts you're not gonna use, like the radios from the Stug, but they needed a few of these parts right here for the cannon, so you get those. Also here we have the wheel set. Now the wheel sets, uh, you get two of this particular one. These are straight off of the original Panzer 1B that came out. 
um, including these extra little rings that if you've watched, I built actually two of these Panzer ones now in 16 scale, very, very nice kits. This is the little ring that'll actually fit over in here to give you some real, real good extreme detail. Just like that. And this is the sprue off the original 1B. So you've got our machine gun sticking out right here. Uh, you won't be using them on there, but these are good to have uh, spare parts in, you know, your kit, kit part box. Now, this right here should be possibly a new sprue. I got to look at it closely here. No, this is <laughs> this is one of the original ones from the sea. They just removed a section of it here that is not going to get used in the kit. Uh, this right here is the this is the new part okay i had to take a closer look here this is the uh the new sprue right here you can see here we got a beautiful slide molded shell with the markings on the bottom we get this little little bin back here and so this is the back of the uh the cannon as well as like this uh, support here and some other accessories here that will convert it around to make that very late war vehicle go on that here we go here is parts off of the uh, the gun itself from the Stug so these are all the base supports and how the actual thing mounts so that is straight off the Dosworks Stug kit we have our upper here let's see if they've changed anything on this one right here this one looks a little bit different than the other one did in the past so yeah, this looks like it's new as well here. So yeah, we've got our floor here and our superstructure and like where the rear engine deck is. So this appears to be a new sprue as well to convert it to the Jagdpanzer 1B. We've got the, uh, the gun portions over here. Now it comes with a plastic barrel right here. But uh, keep in mind, this is just because it's part of the original kit. The actual, uh, there's actually a gun barrel, a metal gun barrel in this one here too. So you won't have to use this plastic one and worry about doing the seam on it. And honestly, off of this sprue, that's why there's so many openings on it. There's just a few parts that you need off of here to, uh, to detail up the gun. We've got the original big sprue here, which had like the uh, the engine deck. So probably most of that is not gonna get used. We mainly need the fenders and some of the other accessory pieces. This is off the original 1B kit. And also we have our original bathtub hull off of the 1B that came out a while ago. And also a very nice looking piece. And the last plastic parts we're going to show you here are the tracks. Now, they actually are hollowed out uh, in here. So you can put a pin inside of it and get the tracks to fully work once you do that. And it also comes with a big, big pile of the actual track pins. And very easy to cut off. Just cut them right around the edge right there and you just slide them inside of this and you will have working tracks. And of course there's very little cleanup here. There's just two little connection points on that side and one on that side and you are ready to start assembling track. And since I keep talking about the original Panzer 1B uh, that came out from TACOM, uh, I built it up as you can see right here and I thought I'd just give you a quick look at what it actually looks like. And it is a beautiful kit. This is particular one has the explosive charge bundle, uh, this, this contraption on the back here. You don't have to build that with it on it, but this gives you an idea what the, the whole lower portion of it's going to be like in the Panzerjäger 1. And here are the last little group of parts and accessories that come in this kit. You see here we have our turned aluminum barrel. Nicely done. We also have two pieces of brass photo etch and these are some grills and this is actually the heat shield that goes over the muffler and finally for metal wise we have our copper wire right here for making the tow cable. Nice thing about the copper wire 
is that it is flexible and it stays in a position once you roll it up. Some of the some of the other wires out there spring back into a straight line if you're not careful. This is really cool that if you want to put it on the front, uh, it's very, very easy to do. There also is two types of decal in here and they're both the same decal. And the picture that I showed you earlier, I think what it is is they weren't really sure what color the markings were on this, so Tacom went ahead and did it in 742 in red and in black, so you can choose whatever you want. And also on the edge here, we have our decal stencils for that 75 millimeter shell that the soldier is holding. That is some really nice detail, especially when you do it up in brass and put those on it, really makes them stick out quite well. And finally, last plastic piece is the uh, the headlight here, or headlight and some other little little lights. And lastly is the clear parts, which we have our headlight and some other clear parts right over in here as well. Now we're going to take a quick look at the instructions right now. And obviously I've built this up before, I just showed you a second ago the, uh, the actual built up of the original Panzer 1B, but we'll quickly take a look at these instructions to give you an idea how easily this whole thing will go together. Okay, let's take a quick, quick look at the instructions now. And I'm just going to go through them rather quickly because I've built this kit. And if you want to see a complete build of the other uh, other ones, you can watch how that all goes together. But this will just give you an idea. If you haven't built one of these before or haven't seen the other video, what you're looking at for a build. All of this is exactly the same. Here's where it actually gets a little bit different. Uh, not this part right here, this actual part right here. So we've got our floorboard and how it attaches with the gun mount right here. We've got our fenders attaching all those parts to the superstructure and then start doing the upper part of the hull where the turret would have normally fit into place. That's how all this is different. Putting that on. The gun goes together just like the uh, the dust works uh, cannon. The only difference here is building on this shield. And finally, you attach the uh, all the parts to the superstructure, and then we can take a quick look here at the variations in decal and markings on here. So we've got this first one here. Uh, you've got it in an all camouflage pattern and then one with a primer gray barrel on a camouflaged uh, chassis. And also this, these are kind of interesting too. So we've got, here's one which would be a gray, a very early war gray chassis with the camouflage gun on it. And there is a look at the 16 scale Panzer Jaeger 1B from Tacom. And next up, we have also in 16th scale from Tacom, the Kleiner Panzerbefehlswagen. And it is a very close cousin to the Panzerjäger 1B that I just showed you. Uh, shares quite a few of the same parts. And what I'm going to do on this kit is, uh, because so many of the parts are identical sprues that you just saw, what I'll do now is just show you all of the new stuff that is uh, a different from the original Panzer I that they came out with uh, a couple years ago. Okay, we're going to jump in just like we did with uh, the Panzer Jäger I with the figure. Now, uh, this is interesting in the fact that there are two different heads in this figure or with this figure, I should say. Uh, here is one of them where he has his, uh, all of this is slide molded here. So he's got his little soft peak hat, as well as a beret. And the beret will fit on this head right over here. You can see it's kind of at a little bit of a angle. And then of course he's got his gun, his regular Panzer uniform, which looks like he's got the, uh, Knight's Cross on there. So it looks like some nice detail to this. Also a set of slide molded binoculars too that you put in his hand. And I'm assuming this is the uh, the brace that you put underneath the, the figure's feet to keep him standing up in the turret. 
So here is the uh, the first figure. Oh, also, actually some more slide molding over here too. So quite a bit of slide molding that went on in this particular figure. Now there's not gonna be a lot of parts between the two kits. This is one of the main things that's gonna vary. This is the, uh, the, the superstructure on the vehicle. And you see you've got all the faceted sides of that big boxy shape. And just let you look at some of those right there. Got the vision ports, the big antenna here. Got some slide molding for the, uh, the mount for the antenna, just like that. And finally, we have the, the main antenna. So that big, big tall thing is not actually a grand panel. This is actually a large antenna that goes up on top of the vehicle. Here are all the supports for it here. So obviously this is all a brand new sprue as well. This is what will convert it into that command tank. Just like that. We've got some photo etch. Here is that same grill uh, that, you know, that uh, heat protector. And then there's some other pieces right here. Not quite sure what those are, but uh, that is your set of photo etch. And sorry to keep blinding you. It is very shiny photo etch. And the last thing to show you is uh, a fairly large set of decals too. Um, you can see there are quite a few different uh, variations inside here. We even have some Africa core symbols with the, uh, the swastika has kind of been turned into a box. And I know that is so it can be sold in uh, Germany, but I think uh, it'd be pretty easy to convert that to a regular Africa core symbol. And you got the big yellow um, crosses, it's regular, the, the hollow white ones, as well as the black and white ones. So nice little set of decals to put on your kit as well. So as for the instructions, I'm not gonna show you the entire instruction sheet because it is so similar uh, for the first 17 steps to the other one. But I thought I would show you this part right here. This is how the, the faceted sides for the superstructure go together. We'll let you see that. Then you mount it on to the hull. Engine deck looks pretty, pretty straightforward. And there, there's a big, big uh, radio uh, antenna for the top there. Then of course the figure. But this is the other thing I wanted to show you were the different markings that you can go ahead and put on this vehicle. So we have one in Libya, which would be the Africa Core one. We've got another one in Libya. And these served all over the place. So you can do quite a few different things in here. Here's one in Russia, one in Poland, a very early war one. And we've got another one in Russia and finally a third one in Libya but this one is in Libya but it is in still the uh, the German gray color so quite a bit of options that you can put the uh, the markings and coloring in and so there you go there is a quick look at the uh, the Kleiner Buffelswagen one three in one kit real fast too um, it is a three-in-one kit, so I thought I would just point out the different ways you can build it. And this is a, a great little summary of how you can do it. So the very first one is a very early one without the antenna on top. Uh, the second one has the antenna as well as this extra stowage bin and the stowage bin without the antenna. So that's what it means by three-in-one. So there you go. There is a quick look at the Kleiner Befels Wagon 1 three-in-one kit. Here we are. Here is probably one of the most unusual kits uh, and something I probably would have never thought I would see in a plastic model kit. And TACOM has surprised us again and done it. And you are looking at the 1 350th scale 
USS ABSD-1 Large Auxiliary Floating Dry Dock. Now, this is a beast. This kit is super heavy, lots of photo etch, lots of plastic parts inside here. And basically what this is, this is a giant floating dry dock that they could sink down. You see off in the corner over there, uh, put a ship inside there, pump out all the water, raise the whole thing up, and go to, go to work on whatever they need to fix on it there. Now, I personally uh, don't know a heck of a lot about something like this. Uh, it's pretty large. Uh, maybe if you guys know, you can leave a comment down in the comment section. But it looks big enough to hold like a uh, heavy cruiser. But maybe even larger. I mean, maybe you could put like a uh, early battleship on there. And maybe partially hang it over the side. But uh, very, very, very cool looking. So let's look at the plastic parts. And you're going to notice right here, I've already set up a good portion of them here. So the very first plastic part is this one right here. This is one of the floats, and you get 10 of them inside here. So you see what I'm talking about, how large a ship could actually fit in here. Um, imagine the ship laying across there. Easily a heavy cruiser. Uh, hopefully it could hold the weight of that. Maybe, Like I said, maybe in the battleship. So that is what you're getting inside of these right here. And now let's move on to the next group of parts. Okay, here it is. This monster bag right here, super heavy. And there are 10 parts inside of here, which I have removed one of them and I'm gonna show it to you right now. So here is the deck section for the, uh, the bottom here, as you can imagine, that would fit right inside of that but you also get all of the superstructures in here. So here's all the side superstructures that go up here on the side. Actually, sorry, this way up on the sides going this way. And that's what's giving this kit a lot, a lot of weight. So you're getting 10 of these sprues inside as well as 10 of the bottom thing. So really cool. And let's let you look at the detail on here. Can imagine building this thing up and you know weathering it putting some rust on it uh very cool and then if to put a big giant ship on it even cooler let's look at the next one so here's another bag of 10 sprues inside of here these are going to be all of our little detail parts so i've got one of them right here to give you guys a close-up and that's it right there look at all of those little parts These look like these will be the tops of the roof sections. Let's see the other side there. So there's probably, what do you think? 70, just off the, you know, looking at it really quick, 70 parts on here. So then you multiply that by 10. So there's a lot of parts in this kit and we haven't even gotten to the photo etch yet. So this is gonna be detail. I can't wait to see this thing built up. Ah, uh, the last sprue is this one right here. Now, luckily, you only get two of this one right here. So you don't have to go too crazy. This is obviously like the end cap uh, that sticks over the edge to catch the edge of the ship. So you get two of this particular sprue. So that is not too, too bad. So that is the total of the four plastic sprues. Of course, most, most of them are multiplied by 10. So you have 32 plastic sprues inside that kit so that accounts for all of the weight and now we are going to look at all of the photo etch that comes inside here so i think the easiest thing to do is to just take one at a time move these over to the edge and let you just look at those here so these look like they're probably some type of railing as well as ladders over in there some other detail parts and then move this one off to the side. Let you see this. We've got some railings over here, uh, some stairwells. Don't know what all of those little tiny parts are. Sorry if I'm blinding it a little bit. I'm just trying to show you as close up as possible on that. This is the cool one right here. This one we're gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see it close up this way. These are all of your cranes. And they're nicely done in photo etch. We've got some more stairwells there. And as well as some details right here. You can see like these are go on the edge. And there's some window frames and some door frames inside there as well. Got the next set of photo etch. 
Some really nice detailed parts on here. And finally, we have our fifth set of photo etch. So once again, more of those little uh, window wit frames and door frames. So all the extra detail that you'd put on this great kit. And wow, look at some of this stuff. You've now seen all the plastic parts so and the photo etch parts. So now we're going to take a look at the instructions and see how all of that stuff goes together. Now, I haven't looked at them yet, too, so I'm going to be surprised right along with you as we film this. Uh, let's just open right up, get past the, uh, the parts breakdown, move right over to this page. So, yeah, that's kind of what I thought it was going to be. There's not going to be a lot of instructions. It's just going to be a lot of duplicates. So, as you see here, you build up your superstructure here. Then you add all of your little tiny little pieces all through here. And then the ever popular make 16, make 20, make two, make two. So the, page one alone is going to take you a very long time. So uh, then we move on to page or step three and four. And just like we thought here, you're going to build up the, uh, the structure, build all the fencing on, all the photo etch, and then make 10 and make eight. So... These are the two that I guess are a little bit different. And then there, you start just clicking them all together. And adding all of that wonderful photo edge. All kidding aside though, I, I have to imagine once this thing is built up, it is gonna be absolutely gorgeous. Uh, someone who puts a ship on there too. Yeah, I think this would be very, very cool to see built up. And then you see these parts are just going over and over again, adding all these little tiny accessories on. Oh, here's the big crane assembly. There we go. And then there is the one set of markings inside. So it's going to be pretty much all gray colors, primarily what looks like an ocean gray for the superstructure. And then the, the deck section is, they're calling out gunship gray. So uh, a, a dark gray for the bottom right there. And there is a small little set of decals inside there. And they're basically just letters on there so we won't take those out but there it is that is quite the beaut this is the uss absd large auxiliary floating dry dock that's a mouthful in itself right there brand new from tacom now all three of these kits are like i said brand new they are all finishing up production on them and they should be available in the united states within i'd say about a month or so in fact uh, they are shipping out these with our uh, andy's hobby headquarters sherman so look for those in the very near future all of them will be available on our website andy's hhq.com so there you go, guys. I want to take this opportunity to thank you as always for watching. And please stay tuned because I have many more videos coming.